Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, Steve, that Steve does an outstanding show here every trading day, folks, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, Mastering Probability. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go right under Newsletters. You're going to hit Mastering Probability on the right-hand side. And you're going to so hit subscribe and you can get master and probability for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. You get it for one year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, folks, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go get it. You can keep it for 29 days. It works for you. Just keep it. It doesn't work for you for some reason. You'll get your money back. Steve Rhodes, I heard we got a new Tiger at 5.33 this morning. We did, 20.5 inches and uh, 6 uh, pounds, 13 ounces. Congratulations, man. Thank you. So Thank you. cool. So yeah. cool. Yeah, number number six. Number um, six. That's what you said. Now you got a hockey team, man. We do. <laughs> we do. We do. But it was uh, 56 hours of labor for wow. my daughter. <laughs> you know, so, and there was some touch and go uh, time periods there. So the umbilical cord yeah. ended up getting wrapped around his neck. Yeah. And so Thank God for those doctors, man. I'm telling you. you. Yeah. You know, when, when I finally talked to my daughter, uh, my daughter uh, after the show today, um, she said, you know, she, there was a period of time where all of a sudden there were like 25 doctors. Wow. In there, yep. you know, and, you know, really monitoring things. But it all worked out in the end. It's a beautiful so thing. Did, you know, didn't have to go wheel down and get a C-section. And everybody's yep. doing just great. So, wow. uh, so cool. Yeah, it's, it, is, it is a beautiful Huge. thing. So, right? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> totally, totally. So while, while it's a great day for, for guys like you and I, yep. with our grandkids and everything, you know, many people around the globe, they're, talk, they're calling for an end of the world or the end of the U.S. dollar or an end of the bull market. Yeah. But like our but like our good friend from uh, game day on Saturday, Lee Corso likes to say, not so fast. I love and so it. that's what uh, today's <laughs> workshop is uh, or workshop, I should say, today's review of what I'll share with uh, you and the listeners out there, the viewers out there is really what it's all about. And instead of just taking a look at the world coming to an end, it's more like the game of dominoes, so to speak, or stacking up the dominoes where yeah. they'll fall one at a time. And so as the first domino, the real first domino out there, and you were really talking about a little bit earlier with regard to risk out there and what's going on uh, overseas, is uh, the first domino drop is really going to be inside of uh, uh, Europe. Yes. And that's what really sends uh, capital to the U.S. In this case here, it happens to be the U.S. dollar. So the safe haven asset is absolutely new, coined it years ago, is the king, king dollar out there. And if we take a look at year to date, now these are yearly charts that we're taking a look at here. What people will see is the US dollar index year over year is up 18%, lights we crewed up 22%. If you right. take a look at the S&P and bonds, S&P down 24%, bonds down 22%, you know, so much for the 60-40 uh, deal out right. there. It, it, it emerging markets are off 25%. Gold is out as well is down 8%. So that's the year over year. And truly, uh, U.S. dollar is the uh, is the safe haven. Now, the Federal Reserve has communicated to us that we're in a period of rising interest rates. It's just like, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 our Fed Reserve uh, uh, Chairman. Uh, Powell. Pa yeah, Powell. You know, remember he, he had the famous quote, I'm not even thinking about thinking about raising right. interest rates, right? Right. Now it's kind of like what he came out with at the last conference was, I'm not thinking about even thinking about, you know, not raising That's interest rates. That's correct. Rate. So, yes. it, right? So he's already told us clearly, you know, what, what they've said. And I, and I heard your comments uh, about Brainerd and, you know, maybe, you know, people are talking about a potential reversal out here. But the thing is, when we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, if we take a look at his comments, we take a look at the A to B equals CD patterns. And it's unusual, Tom, to find a yearly A to B equals CD pattern. But that's what we've got going on inside the king right now. And we're showing it on the screen. And the first move, the first A to B equals CD projection is 120, 121 uh, would be the area. But more likely than not, this will do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. And the reason I suggest that is because that retracement that took place was only about a 48% retracement. So much less than a 61.8. Those typically, when you do less than a 0.618 retracement on that B to C leg, you'll do more than a one-to-one. -one. So the targets for the U.S. dollar, 121 to 129. And throughout history, there have been periods of time where 
We have economic and geopolitical turmoil. And when we have that, capital just simply flees areas, it looks for where it has more confidence. So when the G5 was formed in 85, uh, they chased capital out of the U.S. They That culminated in the 87 crash. Then capital moved to China. That caused a bubble to burst in 1989. Then capital moved to Southeast Asia. That uh, created a bubble in 1994. Then in 1995, the Euro top, capital moved back to the U.S. That created the dot-com bubble. 2002, capital began pouring back into mortgages. That led to the 2007 real estate, real estate crash. Next up was gold. That peaked in 2011. And then capital began shifting back to the Dow in June of 2014 when the ECB went to negative interest rates. And yes, we have political turmoil in the U.S., but we're the best of the worst, or we're certainly not the worst out there. Sure. Sure. And we take a look at the king. I know you've shared this statistic with folks before. The Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago, they estimate that 80% of the $100 bills in circulation are held overseas by foreign investors. And that's how strong the U.S. dollar. And anybody who's traveled overseas, maybe they've reached their pocket. They didn't have the local currency. Wouldn't matter whether it's euros or pounds. If you offer that uh, uh, that restaurant or wherever you're going to purchase U.S. dollars, they'll take it. And give you a big kiss. Right? Exactly. exactly. You don't see that. You don't see that in the U.S., do you? You right. don't see people saying, "Hey, will you take my euro?" Right. You know, people would right. look at them uh, cross-eyed. So, uh, the lack of confidence in the euro. You know, we took a look at an A to B equals CD to the upside for the dollar. There's yeah. also an A to B equals CD to the downside in the euro. And that gives us, and that price projection, that B to C retracement was only 38%, so like a 0 0.382 retracement there. That really tells us that, that we're likely to see more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the downside. So the one-to-one -one price projection around 69 cents for the euro, uh, 53 cents uh, is a likely price target out there. Boy, wouldn't that be fun to be over in Europe with uh, U.S. dollars? We are going to have that? a Tiger meeting in Europe. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, ab absolutely. So capital should continue to flow out of Europe, folks, into the U.S. Most people don't even realize that the European Central Bank can actually go bankrupt. The EU doesn't issue its own debt. Instead, it depends on revenue from its member states out there. And they've asked for more money ever since uh, Brexit out there. So things are really uh, difficult over there. And when you, if we take a look at emerging markets, we have taken a look at what emerging markets have done year to year. Um, according to the latest uh, Bank of International Settlements, there's $13 trillion of U.S. denominated debt out there. With the U.S. dollar moving higher, that's really going to create a major havoc inside those emerging markets out there. This chart here, folks, it's a daily correlation for the U.S. dollar in gold. Uh, bars that are below this uh, zero line, they indicate an inverse correlation. But gold, like all asset classes, needs to be measured in all the major currencies. If we take a look at gold priced in yen, it's really not that far from its all-time high out there. So I'm not looking for a crash as the dollar moves as the dollar moves higher in gold, nor are we looking for that in the case of the S&P 500. But what I am looking for is I'm still looking for the Dow to pull back and bottom out at around 24,843 if we want to be exact. That's a beautiful thing. I like that. <laughs> Folks, come over to our, we to our website at TFNN. You're going to hit newsletters. You're going to see Master and Probability right on the right-hand side. You hit it, and you are off to the races. Congratulations again, Steve. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. And that it. was a great update, man. You know what's interesting Thanks, about that dollar, man? It, it's almost too easy, folks, for that 121, which is the high. That's I right. I can see that spike. Have That's a great right. one. Have a safe one.